And Lisa actually started volunteering with LOPA in 2010. Um, so I have had the incredible pleasure of working with Lisa for the last 10 years. Um, and she, I'm going to let her tell you a little bit more about that um, in a minute as to kind of how she got started working with us. But what we're going to do for just a few minutes, um, I need to get my watch and make sure I'm, I'm keeping good time. Um, what we're going to do for just a couple of minutes is I'm going to kind of QA Lisa on um, when she started volunteering with us and how she's learned to develop her story. Now, I do want to preface this by saying I know we have several volunteers on here who are just as seasoned as Lisa is, who, is, who have been sharing their story um, for a very long time with us, and you know how to share your story, and you know what you're doing, and that is great. Um, so we know that you, there are many more capable volunteers as well, um, but I do know that there are a few on here today who are wanting to hear this information, maybe some newer volunteers um, who are still nervous about sharing their story because they're not sure um, how to do that. So, um, Lisa, do you want to share a little bit? I know when you talk about how you started sharing your story, you know, kind of how you prepared yourself, how it was something you didn't really want to do and you were scared to do in the beginning. Maybe share with that and we'll kind of work into. Okay. Um, I waited a good four years before I started volunteering. I knew one day I'd want to, but I didn't want to stand up in front of the classes or, or wherever and just cry my eyes out. Um, to me, they wouldn't have got my point behind my message. And so um, I waited till I felt strong enough. Oh, okay. Wait until I felt strong enough, and then I started volunteering. And um, the I remember the first one I was going to was actually her high school. Oh, that's true. Um, that she would have graduated from, and so I sat down to write what I was going to say, and nothing came to me. And so you know, I just I put it in God's hands, and I said, "You better leave me." And I just relived that weekend that we had the last weekend together and how everything went and somehow the words come to me. Um, you know, I didn't try to make it interesting or whatever, <laughs> it just came to me. And I mean, 10 years later, and, you know, one thing I remember when Lisa first started is, you know, she could tell her whole story and do it very, I mean, 10 minutes or less. <laughs> I mean, it was very quick. So um, if I ever needed somebody to fill time, Lisa was not the volunteer no. I called at the time. Um, but um, as time has progressed, you know, she has done a really incredible job of filling out her audience. Um, I know, you know, there's a special part of her story where she remembers the nurse, you know, that took care of Lacey. And so if we're talking to a group of nurses, she really puts a lot of more focus, not a lot more, but she will focus on that. Whereas in other presentations with students, that's not really anything, um, I know with nursing students, that's oh, a big absolutely. part. absolutely. Um, but, you know, with students, and, and Lisa is going to share her story for you, um, but there's a big part of her story about having the conversation. So when we're in, in high schools and we're um, talking to students, you know, she really, really drives home um, the conversation. And I feel like, too, and, and you can kind of share, we were talking a minute ago, because we know when you get up to share your story, there's so much you could share, you know. Um, but how do you kind of focus on the the major points and then share that I mean are there certain parts of your story that are kind of the highlights you feel like people need to know and I, I do feel that way um, I like I say I start off our weekend and all and um, I try to put something in there that the students can relate to um, part of it I talk about is going to blockbuster surrender the movie and now I can kind of shed some lightness on it because there's no blockbusters anymore. So that makes us realize how long ago it was. And they'll giggle at that, you know. Say it does bring, right. kind, of, kind of break the tension. Right, it breaks yeah. the tension up. We talk about cell phones. They, I have a picture of them each on their cell phone together. They had cell phones, but they didn't have texting then. So they had to actually talk. And so to me, that's something that the kids can relate to and stuff and so I try to get on their level to where you know it's a heavy subject and you don't want to scare them or them you know shut down to listening to it to you right. and so that's why I try to add you know 
bring those things up and um you know in the conversation you know and stuff that is definitely a big highlight in my presentation is that you know she came home one day and had heard a local presentation and she made me talk about it and all so um thankfully because i don't know you know that it would have turned out the same way you know we well in my story i say how my husband first said no you know and stuff and um if i wouldn't have remembered the conversation lacy and i had i don't know you know i was kind of following what everybody was telling me i might have just said no but um you know i discussed it with him and said oh no we talked about this and all so um um i think and and, and two you know i think what we'll do because we do keep we went back and forth whether we should do this before or after she shared so i think what we'll do is we'll go ahead and let lisa share her story um and then i was looking to see because i'm going to give her she's going to have to uh let's see five ten got about 15 minutes Oh, you can do it. That's long minutes. for me. Oh, it is not. <laughs> she can do it in 15 minutes. Um, and But then that's leaving about five minutes for um, any questions that you may have and anything else that you think of as you're going along, if you want to touch on that at the end. But um, I know that Lisa is very willing and open to answer any questions about things that have helped her or, you know, things that she focuses on when she is sharing her story. Um, you know, in, in the five minutes we have at the end of Lisa's presentation as well, if any of you do have things that maybe help you share your story, I know we're hearing from a donor mom, so maybe from a recipient perspective, you know, what helps you kind of know these are the points that I focus on, this is how I do it, and this is how I make sure I do it in the time frame I'm given. So, um, again, thank you all for joining. We're going to let Lisa share. Lisa does have some pictures, so what I'm going to do is, um, as she's sharing for just a few seconds, I'll hold the pictures up to the camera so everybody can see her pictures. I think that's another big thing too is having the visuals and mm -hmm. the face um, to see yeah. as well. So um, yeah. with that, Lisa, take it away. Okay. And um, volunteering with local, you always learn because doing these uh, presentations on these things yeah. is something new, you know, and stuff. We've had to go online um, for a lot of things and I have trouble where do I focus. So if you if I look like I'm talking to the side, it's because I have to focus a little. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm coming in. Right but um, basically what I start off doing is I introduce my daughter. And um, this is my daughter, Lacey. Um, Susanna's going to put it up. This picture was taken in June of 2006. She completed her freshman year at Como High School. Um, she was a four point Oh, honor student. She was a cheerleader. Um, she had been in dance for 12 years. She was perfectly healthy, no problems whatsoever. Um, the weekend before school, you know, we went through the summer, and the weekend before school was starting, um, that Saturday she went to uh, with her fellow cheerleaders to a, uh, and I'm going to lose my train of thought, to a uh, poster making um, party for the upcoming football uh, season and they made posters all day and stuff and she wasn't driving yet. I went pick her up when she was finished, came home, but she had a little boyfriend that um, lived not far from her house. And so she asked me if it was okay if he came over that night for supper and watch movies. I said, sure. My husband was out of town. I have another daughter. Um, Jake came over, I took him to Blockbusters, we're in a movie, you know, now Blockbusters isn't even open anymore. But we came back home and we had supper and the next day was their um, orientation for the athletic department at the, their high school and it was called Meet the Spartans. And because they, neither one drove, I was going to be driving them, I had the minivan and everything. And so they each had cell phones and they each called a friend about riding together. And something made me go, and my cell phone didn't have a camera on it at that point. Something made me go and get my camera and take a picture of them sitting on my couch, each on their cell phone, talking to a friend about riding together the next day. I just thought they looked so cute. And uh, when they finished, 
their their conversation and I'm sure instructed me about what time I was picking everybody up and stuff. And they started watching their movie and I was doing things around my house and I went back into my bedroom. And I hadn't been back there that long when there was a knock on my bedroom door and it was Jake saying, Miss Lisa, Lacey's not feeling well. And so I said, okay. And knowing Lacey like I knew her, um, she would have waited till he left before she said she didn't feel good. She wasn't one that exaggerated things. She would have kept it in. And when I walked outside and I saw her laying on my couch holding her head saying, my head hurts, my head hurts. My first thought was I have to bring her to the emergency room. And so I hollered at my other daughter to come. And um, now I laugh because I even went a wet wash rack to put it on her head thinking she's got a headache. That's all I kept thinking. But um, when she went to get up, she didn't have feeling in her leg. And so Jake said, that's okay, Miss Lisa, I can carry her. So he scooped her up and he put her in my van and we jumped in the van. And I live out in the country, but I don't have a very long driveway. But I took off down my driveway and I wasn't even halfway through and I heard Jake yell her name. And when I looked over my shoulder, I saw she had gone unconscious. Well, at that point, I called 911. And the ambulance got there very quickly. I had even sent Jake and Lexi run to get the neighbors, um, you know, to come help me out and stuff. But the ambulance arrived um, and they rushed us to Women's and Children's Hospital in Lafayette. And they uh, did a CAT scan. And they informed me that she had had a massive brain bleed. Um, they told me it was from an AVM, an arterial venous malformation. I had never heard of that. I had no earthly idea what, what it was. Um, but they, you know, told us that she'd have to have surgery. And so they transferred us to Lafayette General Hospital and they performed surgery. And when the doctors came out, they told us she had a 50-50 chance of living. I chose to be very optimistic. She was going to make it. I knew it was going to be a long haul, but she was going to make it. And so the Sunday, they were letting whoever wanted to go in see her, but it never clicked that it wasn't going to be a good outcome. I had already talked to my mom and my mother-in-law about, you know, I'm going to need y'all help to take care of her and get her back to normal. And, um, they let me stay in the ICU room with her, and that should have been another indication. But in the middle of the night was when I realized the nurse kept coming in, and I was like, okay, she was just in here and dug that. What is this? And um, I think that's when I realized that I didn't think she was going to make it. And the next morning, sure enough, the doctor came in and informed my husband and I that she was brain dead. Um, we were in shock, disbelief, very angry. We had a, a perfect life in our, in our eyes. Um, she looked fine. She just looked like she was sleeping. And, uh, my, you know, we just couldn't grasp it all. Well, not right away, but not long after, Lopa came in and approached us about her being an organ donation and my husband's first response was no he said she's been through enough i don't want anybody talk, touching her and matter of fact for years i kind of was almost embarrassed when i would see sean paul because he was our family advocate because i was like he must have thought we were so rude to him you know but he saw us at our, a desperate time in our life but thank God I remembered that conversation Lacey and I had. See, she came home one day from driver's ed, and I can see her walking out of her room down the hall to me and saying, hey, mom, the people from Lopa came today. She said, what do I want to do? Do I want to be an organ donor or not? Or as parents, you never want to think about that, especially about your child. And I was guilty of it. I was like, Lacey, I mean, it's a learner's permit. You have plenty of time. And I said, they're your organs. I can't make that decision for you. Only you can do that. But I said, I didn't decide to be an organ donor until I had children. 
I said, just one day I thought, what if my children would need? And I thought, I need to sign up to be an organ donor because I would want someone to help my children. But I said, it's a learner's permit. You have plenty of time. Don't stress over it. Well, Lacey was a stressor and she did everything by the book. She did it right. And so one day I decided to surprise her and I came home and I said, come on, let's go. We're going to take your test for your um, learner's permit because she had several friends that had failed. So she was stressed out on whether she'd pass or not. So I just surprised her. And I took her to the, um, the driver's license place and um, she went in and she took her test and she walked out and they called her name with her license. And she went get it and she walked out and she showed me that license with a big smile on her face. And the first thing I noticed was that heart on her license. And I said, you decided to be an organ donor? And she said, yeah. She said, after we talked, she had called her godmother and talked to her godmother about it. She had talked to friends about it. And she said, if I can help someone, I'd want to. And I was like, well, that's awesome. Lacey got that permit on July 13th of 2006. Lacey's brain bleed was on August 12th of 2006, and she was pronounced brain dead on August 14th of 2006. 30 days, 30 days before she made that decision. And so, of course, we honored Lacey's decision. And Lacey saved six people's lives. Um, her heart, and back then, you could find out more information than you can now, but you, you know, I know her heart went to a little 11-year-old girl in Texas. And at the time, Lacey's sister was 11 years old. Um, a 15-year-old girl here in Louisiana received one of her kidneys. A 16-year-old girl in Georgia received her liver. Um, her, one of her lungs went to a 58-year-old woman in Oklahoma. And then I think it was a 58 and 62 year old man and woman in Pennsylvania received her other kidney and her other lung. And, um, you know, today's a good day for me, I tell people. Um, I can't take Lacey shopping. I can't go out to eat with her. I can't take her to the movies, but I can share her story. And so Suzanne and I joke now, this is my Lacey day. This is my day of spending time with my child the only way I can. Um, I started volunteering when I felt strong enough because I wanted to learn more about organ donation. The first thing I did was research everything about AVMs and find out about it. You know, I wanted to know. You know, she came from me. Did I do something to cause this? You know, it just, there's so much that goes through your mind. And then the next thing I started saying was, did I make the right decision donating her organs? And I knew I did because it was her decision. But then I was like, she was 15. Did she really know, you know, and stuff? And so then I said, well, I want to know more about organ donation. And so I started volunteering and I'm always learning something new always learning something new about it and i love it and i just you know it's not the way i want to spend my time with Lacey, but i'm still her mom and so this is the way i can some people don't understand it but for me it's fulfilling and all and if i can just touch one person to get them to go home just like Lacey did and say hey the people from lopa came today just so you know i want to or I don't want to, but it's important to have that conversation. And that's our story. I don't know if anybody has questions or yeah, I leave them so out. No, you it's did great. It's so different. I wanted to make sure you shared the lazy day part because okay. that's one of my favorite parts. Um, you know, and I think a lot of times, especially in high schools, when we're talking to students, you know, and who may a lot of times take for granted the time they do get to spend with their parents. Um, you know, I think that really kind of brings it home for them.